Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Let us start with the LTC chemistry weekend test paper solution. Question number one, the velocity of UV rays is x meter per second and because radio waves are also electromagnetic radiation, their velocity will also be equal. So the answer is x. The electronic transition in hydrogen atom involving maximum emission of energy will be 4 is to 1 because this covers the maximum number of energy levels, right? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? So 4 to 1 covers these 3 energy levels with the maximum energy gap. 3 to 2 covers only 1 level, 2 to 1 also covers only 1 level and 5 to 3 it covers 2 levels, right? So the maximum energy is emitted in this case. A specific charge is equal to charge divided by mass because the charge is same uh, on proton and electron only the sign is opposite so the specific charge will depend inversely upon the mass right now because the mass of proton is 1836 times the mass of the electron so the specific charge will be the reciprocal of this so it will be 1 is to 1 is 1836 uh, right the energy of a photon is 4.5 electron volt the wavelength of photon is equal to so in this question we will use Planck's equation is equal to hc by lambda so lambda is equal to hc in si units it is approximately 2 into 10 to minus 25 and the energy is 4.5 electron volt so what is the value of 1 electron volt 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 joule right so when you calculate it and convert it to nanometer so this will come out to be approximately this work function is phi and the maximum kinetic energy is equal to 2 right so the energy of the incident photon will be 4.2 plus 2 will be which will be 6.2 electron volt again you use the formula hc by lambda and calculate the wavelength it will come out to be approximately 2000 angstrom for the series limit of Balmer series the transition is infinity to 2 right because this is the last transition and uh, for the line series the corresponding transition is infinity to 1 all right so energy it will be Rydberg constant z square 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square the ratio of Balmer series and the Lyman series the energy of these lines will be 1 upon 2 square minus 1 upon infinity square divided by 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon infinity square so this will be 1 upon 4 and because wavelength depends upon energy inversely right wavelength depends inversely on the energy so this will be 4 is to 1 clear guys Based on Bohr's theory, when n value increases, the incorrect statements are a and c because velocity is proportional to z by n, right? So as n increases, velocity decreases. Total energy of electron increases? Yes, right? Radial distance between successive orbits decreases? No, because radius is proportional to n square. So the radius increases, radial distance increases with increase in n. Energy difference between successive orbits decreases? Yes, right? Because energy is minus rh z square by n square so as n increases the energy difference between successive orbits it will decrease right so that is the answer the total energy guys it is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt upon n square it is given to be minus 1.51 so if you cancel it out it will approximately come out to be 9 and hence n will come out to be 3 so we are talking about third orbit here angular momentum is mvr is equal to nh upon 2 pi n is 3 so 3h upon 2 pi and h upon 2 pi is called Dirac h so this will be a correct answer in this the incorrect statement is this because they are not isobars they are isotones right they have the same number of neutrons in phosphorus we have 31 minus 15 which is 16 neutrons and in sulfur we have 32 minus 16 that is 16 neutrons a species having same number of neutrons are isotones right not isobars Unit of Planck's constant is joule second, not joule per second. Alpha particle is the heaviest particle. No, alpha particle is not a fundamental particle. So both statements are incorrect. Bohr's theory is applicable to one electron system, right? H minus has two electrons. So this is incorrect. The rest of the three statements are correct. Okay. Work function roughly uh, has the same trend as the ionization enthalpy, right? So we know that in group 1 metals, uh, ionization enthalpy decreases down the road, so work function will also decrease. So this is the correct answer. The radius of second orbit uh, R2 will be A0, right? Or R0 if we are taking the symbol here. N square is 2 square and for beryllium Z is 4. So this will cancel out. It will come out to be R0. Correct statement guys is SI unit for frequency of electromagnetic radiation is hertz, right? 
they can travel in vacuum the frequency of x rays is less than because gamma rays has the highest frequency and wave number is directly proportional to frequency in the calculation of wave number of an electronic transition using gridberg's equation the sum of n1 and n2 is maximum 4 okay so first line of fun series so lyman bama pascal bracket fun so in fun series electron drops to fifth first line means sixth right that electron jumps from 6 to 5 so the sum of n1 and n2 is 11 so uh, likewise you can calculate for all of them so this comes out to be the maximum 11 right for the formation of two moles of water so 2 h2 gas plus o2 gas it gives us 2 h2 right in a standard state water will be liquid uh, so delta h is equal to delta e plus delta ng R is that clear guys right so delta h minus delta e it will be delta ngrt and delta ng is a uh, number of gaseous moles of products which is 0 minus a number of gaseous moles of reactants which is 3 right so delta h minus delta is minus 3 rt so that is the correct answer most stable carbocation uh, this carbocation is stabilized by resonance this carbocation is also stabilized by resonance right both these cations are stabilized by resonance but you will notice that in the first case the resonance structure has complete octet of all atoms whereas in this structure i'm drawing the resonance structure so in this case the terminal carbon does not have the octet of electrons in it right in its valence shell so this resonance structure contributes more that is it is more stable as compared to this right so this is the most stable carbocation these carbocations are stabilized by hyperconjugation which is less powerful uh, than resonance a system absorbs 1800 joule so q is plus 1800 joule and does 1350 joule of work so w is minus 1350 as per the first law of thermodynamics change in internal energy is q plus w so you can find out the answer the carbocation with least stability here uh, there is plus h uh, stabilizing hyperconjugation here we have minus i effect and uh, no2 has the most powerful inductor effect right electron withdrawing so this is least uh, stable that is most destabilized mass enthalpy internal energy these are extensive properties they depend upon the amount of matter in the system density does not right because it is a ratio of two extensive properties so this is our answer the standard enthalpy of formation is zero for elements in their most stable states which happens to be o2 gas for oxygen right uh, for them it cannot be zero for bromine it will be in the liquid state correct decreasing order of stability these are stabilized by hyperconjugation guys okay and this is stabilized by hyperconjugation as well as resonance so third will be most stable and then we count the number of alpha hydrogen atoms here we have three four five six seven alpha hydrogen atom and here we have four alpha hydrogen atom right so second is more stable than first that is our order enthalpy change cannot be called as enthalpy of atomization right so basically in enthalpy of atomization the product should should be gaseous atoms which that is not the case in option three so that is the correct answer internal energy which is the incorrect statement regarding it its absolute value cannot be determined right remember the absolute values of internal energy enthalpy and gibbs energy cannot be determined the benzyl carbocation with maximum stability is this cation because here uh, methyl group is on meta so this will not be able to stabilize as much cyanide is electron withdrawing group and this methyl is at para position so yes this can stabilize which of the following can have positive sign or negative sign freezing is always exothermic atomization is bond breaking endothermic vaporization is again bond breaking of liquid molecule that is endothermic so which uh, can be both positive and negative that is enthalpy of formation most stable carbocation among the following all right so if you notice the positive charge is on an electronegative carbon all these carbon atoms are for forming pi bonds so they are electronegative they are not stable with positive charge only in this case the carbocation is sp2 hybridized moreover we do have uh, three alpha hy hydrogen atoms which are stabilizing it uh, through hyperconjugation methyl free radical the incorrect statement highly reactive yes paramagnetic yes it has pyramidal shape no the alkyl radicals right in general they have planar shape right because they have sp2 hybridization so they are planar Hybridization of carbon atom in methyl carbocation, yes, uh, in general it is sp2 hybridization, that is the correct answer. For hyperconjugation, the presence of alpha hydrogen is must, but here the alpha hydrogen atom is, uh, it belongs to the benzene ring, it does not have any hydrogen atom, right? 
the rest of them they do have hydrogen atoms you see they do have hydrogen atoms free radicals cannot be no they are stabilized by hyperconjugation free radicals can be stabilized by resonance yes so statement one is incorrect second is correct which of the following is a nucleophile because nitrogen carries a lone pair in ammonia it can act as nucleophile <coughs> For electrophiles, they should be able to accept electrons. Sulfur has vacant d orbitals. Mn2 plus has anyway vacant orbitals. It has incomplete octate, and PF5 has uh, uh, vacant d orbitals. So all of them can act as electrophiles. This is interesting. In benzene, the new pi bond is formed by the sp2 hybrid or orbitals, right? So there is one pi bond that is formed by hybrid orbitals. CH two CH two can act like nucleophile. Yes, it will act as a pi donor because it has a pi electron pair which can be donated. And CH three CH two plus can act like an electrophile. Yes, because it is a carbocation. They are the most famous electrophiles. So yes, the, both statements are correct. Nucleophilicity is highest for. So remember, across the period, uh, nucleophilicity decreases. So C negative is most unstable and hence uh, it will attack most easily. So carbon ions are the strongest nucleophiles. Carbon ion which is not stabilized by resonance, uh, it should be in conjugation with a p orbital, right, of an alkene or like that. But here it is not. It is a saturated carbon, right? Here it is in conjugation with the benzene ring. Here uh, we have a, a pi bond. Here we have a pi bond. So that is the correct answer. Leaving group ability will be highest for iodide because uh, leaving group ability is inversely proportional to basic strength and because out of HCl, HBr, HI, and HF, HI is the strongest acid. Iodide will be the weakest conjugate base, and hence best leaving group. Which one of the following is the ability to act like both electron pair acceptor and electron electron pair donor? Uh, definitely, this is SO two because it has lone pair on sulfur, so definitely it can act as electron pair donor. And because of the presence of d orbital, it can also act as electron pair acceptors. The heat of combustion, uh, heat of reaction at constant volume is given, guys. Heat of reaction at constant pressure is asked for one mole of liquid benzene. Let us write the equation: C six H six liquid reacting with oxygen gas, and it is forming six CO two gas. And because the reaction is occurring at twenty seven degrees Celsius, so H two will be in the form of water. So three H two O liquid. All right. So let us find out delta Ng for this. Uh, six into two twelve plus three fifteen by two oxygen molecules will be there. Uh, gaseous moles of products will be six, and the gaseous moles of reactants will be fifteen by two. So this will be minus three by two. All right. So heat of reaction at constant pressure delta H is equal to delta U, which is minus three two six zero plus delta Ng R T. So minus three by two. You substitute the value of R. You substitute temperature three hundred, and then you divide it by thousand. Because it should be in kilojoule per mole, right? So you will you will calculate the correct answer will come out to be approximately this, right? For this equation, the calculate the heat of formation, right? Uh, this is the decomposition for that uh, and minus y kilojoule. That means uh, heat is withdrawn. So in the formation of HCl, heat will be released, so it will be minus y kilojoule heat. But it is for two uh, moles of HCl, so for one one mole of HCl, it will be minus y by two. Okay. For one mole of an ideal gas is expanded reversible and isothermally. For reversible and isothermal, right? Because the process is isothermal, so T is constant. T is constant. So internal energy is constant. That means delta E is zero. As for the first law of thermodynamics, this is equal to Q plus W. So W is equal to Q, but uh, they are not uh, zero, right? Is that clear? The magnitude of work is equal to the magnitude of heat, but they are not zero. For this equation, uh, it is an endothermic. No, 394 kilojoule of heat is released, right? It is written inside of product, so it is an exothermic reaction. But it should be written as delta H is equal to 394 minus 394. So this is not a properly represented thermochemical equation. The standard enthalpy of monoclinic sulfur is zero. No, rhombic sulfur is taken as the standard state. A th thermochemical equation must be balanced using fractions only. No, there is no such restriction. So both statements are incorrect. Thermodynamic property. Uh, which is a path function in thermodynamics heat and work are path functions right the change in enthalpy when 6 g of nitric oxide so let us see nitric oxide decomposing to form half n2 plus half o2 uh, this is the equation so and the molar mass of this is uh, 30 g right so when 6 g of nitric oxide reacts uh, decomposes the heat changes minus 18 kJ right so when 30 g decomposes it five times so it is minus 90 But we are assuming we are considering the formation of nitric oxide, so it is basically the reverse equation. So this will be plus 90 kilojoule. All right, guys. 
the work done in the this process because pressure is constant so minus p delta v right so minus 1 atm and the volume change is 15 minus 5 liter so this will be 10 minus 10 liter atm and 1 liter atm guys it is 101.3 joules right so approximately minus 1010 joule here uh, work done you'll have to find out this is uh, the process is reversible all right so it will be minus nrt ln b2 by v1 right isothermal reversible so minus one mole of gas the value of r in calorie it is approximately 2 multiplied by temperature is 1000 kelvin and ln final volume is 100 initial volume is 10 right so this will be uh, ln 10 which is 2.303 approximately right so minus 2 into 2.303 into 1000 calorie so basically this will be kilo calorie so that is our answer minus 4.606 uh, this is very simple guys this is a correct answer in closed matter uh, closed system you cannot exchange uh, matter right so you can uh, do this open system both can be exchanged isolated system nothing can be exchanged for this delta h is equal to delta e plus delta ngrt so obviously if delta ng is positive delta h is greater than delta e if delta ng is negative, delta h is less than delta e, and if delta ng is zero, then delta h is equal to delta e. So here delta ng is positive because the gas is forming. So you will see that delta h is greater than delta e. Is that clear, right? And here delta ng is negative, so delta h is less than delta e. In this delta ng is zero, delta h is equal to delta e. All right. So thank you guys.